Most people here will agree with me that colonialism is bad. But why is it still here in our everyday lives? I'm 32 and I'm a bioinformatician. As a bioinformatician, I've learned how to look at biological data and how to make sense of it. When I finished my studies, I noticed the way that governments and organizations collect data, lay claim on data, and then sell it. Fittingly, in 2016, Jim Thatcher called this data colonialism. My talk today will be about fighting data colonialism, like Robin Hood stealing from the data rich and giving it to the data poor. We're creating more and more data every day, collecting data about ourselves. But the people that make the data are the ones most often robbed of the right to own and control this resource. There was a very good example, the first Facebook, big Facebook scandal of Cambridge Analytica, where Cambridge Analytica, based upon Facebook profiles, could create psychological profiles of up to 100 million people. With this data, they could then influence political campaigns, such as the presidential campaign of Donald Trump and the Brexit referendum. By controlling the data, governments and organizations can influence the way that we see the world and how we make our decisions. Luckily, in 2018, two years later, um, the General Data Protection Regulation came along, also known as the GDPR. The GDPR limits what is legally possible with data about European citizens. In short, the GDPR is, uh, limits the way that they can use data about European citizens. The European citizen needs to give consent. They need to understand what is done with the data and privacy-sensitive data needs to be secured. So the GDPR limited what could be done with the data, but data colonialism is still quite present. Governments and organizations still lay claim on data and sell it. And the GDPR enforcers, they mostly do not have the means to enforce the GDPR. Luckily, it did create an opportunity, an opportunity for ethical systems to be designed. One of such concepts is ownership by design wherein the person actually owns the data that is collected about them, stealing from the data rich and giving it back to the data poor, the rightful owners. Such a system is not only more ethical, it makes using data and keeping track of data easier, since all data that exists is in your personal environment and not in a bunch of organizations. It also makes it easier for the person to actually use, since you do not have to use a bunch of apps. But let's look at an example. It's nice that I'm talking about it, but let's say I want to use data. I want to use it again. So let's say uh, a child is born. At birth, the child is given a name. The name is a data point. Later in life, during enrollment in a school, or while applying for an eventual job, this name can be used again. This is, of course, just a small example. So let's look at it from another perspective. I'm a bioinformatician, so why not look at it from a biomedical perspective? A person has a rare disease. They want to understand their rare disease better. So they talk to their doctor, and their doctor proposes to get their DNA sequenced, so they will understand it better. Afterwards, the person chooses to donate their data to science, for the general public to improve knowledge about that rare disease. The data could only be used after the person gives an informed consent. An informed consent is a way for the person to actually understand the way that the data is used. I, that your, you know how your stuff is used. Basic human values, right? So, We've primarily looked at it from one side, from a data owner side, from a personal side. But a researcher would like to use that data. How does the researcher interact? 
So the researcher can knock on a person's digital door and ask for that data to the person without knowing who the person on the other side of the door is. After the person has then given an informed consent, they could analyze that data. And since they do not have to create that data again, it's much faster and much easier to actually get that data. It doesn't only reduce the cost and the, the speed of research, it actually also makes sure that it creates less data creates less of an impact on the environment, since we don't have to be a Facebook about it. You know, dumping data centers everywhere. One of such systems that brings uh, data ownership to people is implementing it and bringing genetic data to people. They perform pharmacogenetics. With pharmacogenetics, we can better understand the way your DNA interacts with medication. This is why their first test will be with people with colon cancer and depression. Giving ownership of data back to the person breaks the trend of data colonialism and needs to be widely applied to give people back the control over their own lives. Thank you.